Okay, Sister Jan, this is uh, part two of that uh, question that we received from Anonymous. Um, so continue with the email. It says, so bearing in mind, and then for those who might pick this up, you have to look at the part one it's, uh, or listen to part one or if if, um, if Cindy is going to uh, transcribe this, then she'll put it all together, hopefully. Anyway, so so uh, Anonymous writes, so bearing in mind what they thought, and the they is Peter, James, and John, and the Apostle Paul, these these uh, the three apostles, three head apostles to Israel at that time, and the one unique, distinct Apostle Paul, our spokesman from God, today in the in the dispensation of grace, the age of grace. So bearing and 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 when he says so, bearing in mind what they thought. And that was they, they thought the Lord would return in their lifetime. And they all did because that was their hope. And that was the hope God gave them. God, the father didn't reveal that it would be this long. Um, even when the dispensation of grace began, the apostle Paul figured it would the, that the rapture, that the end of the dispensation of grace would be in his lifetime. First um, Thessalonians four, he says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Paul, evidently, at least early in his ministry, his, his ministry spanned uh, around 30 years or so, even maybe a little more. It wasn't until the end when he when he was in Second Timothy where he realized, oh, I may die before the Lord returns. But he still didn't know it would be 2000 years. No doubt. If you ask the apostle at the end of his life before he died under the, under the despicable Nero there in Rome, he. He would have told you, uh, the Lord is coming soon, Timothy. You know, as we told Timothy, he would have told us that too. But God the Father extended the dispensation of grace one more day for, as we now know, nearly 2,000 years. Could end today. Or it could end in, in another 1,000 years. It's up to God the Father. Nobody knows. That's the point. By the way, the angels don't know. When the Lord talks about the second coming in Israel, to Israel in the prophetic program. He says, no man know of the day. He says, no, not the angels of heaven, neither the sun. Nobody knows. The angels don't know. Peter says uh, that the angels desire to look into what God is doing to Israel, with Israel. Paul in Ephesians 3 talks about the angelic host uh, uh, learn about the dispensation of grace through the body of Christ. So, I mean, the angels don't have all knowledge. They're, they're, they're just as, I mean, they, they, get, they get to understand things uh, as God reveals them. In fact, that's, that's the whole thing we're rightly dividing the word. What God is, has revealed through the Apostle Paul in his 13 books, Romans through Philemon, is called the mystery of Christ. This was a secret, something God kept secret in himself, was hid in God, which was kept secret since the world began, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as is now revealed. Um, to Paul and in the beginning through other holy apostles and prophets by the spirit through the spiritual uh, revelation uh, the gifts the spiritual gifts God God revealed it well the information given to Paul was was a secret and everything associated with this dispensation of grace and quite frankly obviously it has gone this long that was part of God's plan and purpose to, to gain members of the church the body of Christ for the heavenly places, okay? But Paul didn't know all the details as far as how long, how the time, the time period. Uh, the, the, God didn't say, Paul, it's going to be 2,000 years. No. Nope. Now, we can look back. So let's finish this. He says, so bearing in mind what they thought, and they thought that the, the Lord would return in, in his program with them in their lifetime or very soon. They didn't think it would be 2,000 years. No, and I'm sure that, that's true. So bearing in mind what they thought, how can Hebrews to Revelation be written 2,000 years ago, yet somehow not come into effect to after the rapture? Well, th that's the mystery. The books of Hebrews to Revelation. G God is, see, you got to understand why they wrote it back then. At the same time, why it is not in effect today and it's going to be future. God was compiling his book. The scripture, the prophets of Paul's day put the Bible together. No church council did that. God did. That was one of the, the, the purposes of the prophets, particularly in the body of Christ, is to say, thus saith the Lord. Not just for, for speak God's word or foretell God's word or to foretell God's word, but to recognize God's word. 
If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 14, 37. The Bible was put together back there by the prophets. God, God, now, we now have all scripture. But to have all scripture, you need all, all the books of the Bible. So God had Peter, James, John, John, <clears throat> John just didn't write the, the gospel of John. He wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation. So we, the Bible was compiled back, back then. We have all 66 books, but that doesn't necessarily mean, look, he says, uh, so bearing in mind what they thought, how can Hebrews uh, through Revelation be written 2,000 years ago, yet somehow not come into effect because of the doctrine. They're not in effect in the present dispensation. As long as the dispensation of grace, it, first of all, they wrote it during the time of the Apostle Paul. I mean, Second Peter was written late in, in, in the 60s as well, like, like uh, Paul's latter books, because Peter mentions, you know, in Second Peter 3 about the wisdom that God gave Paul. Peter understood that, that, that Paul had a different revelation from God about the dispensation of grace. But so he's preparing, he's, 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 um, he is with the little flock that was during his day, he's, he's, uh, showing them, you know, reminding them about the change in the program. He's exhorting them to continue on because soon the Lord would end our program and, 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 and work with them again. You know, again, he doesn't know the timing of it, but also it takes effect in the future as well, because the dispensation of grace, once this dispensation of grace ends, the doctrine in Hebrews through Revelation is what the issue is. The doctrine. So, so I don't want to say this. So bearing in mind what they thought, how can Hebrews through Revelation be written 2,000 years ago, yet somehow come into effect? That? The same way, let's say, for example, Isaiah or Daniel. Daniel chapter 9, verses 20, uh, 24 through 27, the last part of that, now, Daniel was written before Jesus Christ was on earth, yet part of that passage of Daniel 9 is going to, to be, uh, uh, it's called prophecy. That's what, how can, some, how, can, how can something be written 2,000 years ago and then take effect until, uh, you know, later? It's called prophecy. How can God in Genesis chapter number 3 said the seed of the woman will destroy the seed of the serpent. That hasn't happened yet. That's, that's Christ destroying the Antichrist. That's future. Because God calls those things which be not as though they were, Paul says in Romans 5, 4. God, according to Isaiah 42, 46, all that, he says, I'm telling you why I'm God. The reason the Bible's the Bible is because God says, I will tell you the future before it happens. He tells people, he says, go ask your gods, your little gods, and have them tell you the future before it happens. See, only the God of creation, the God of the Bible can do that. So whether God wrote, he had Moses write about Genesis 3, about the, the seed of the woman destroying the seed of the serpent. Hasn't happened yet. That's not going to be fulfilled to what? Six, seven thousand years down the line. Well, because God is God. He prophesied. So that's what prophecy is. So you wrote, how can Hebrews through Revelation be written 2,000 years ago and yet somehow not come into effect after the rapture? Well, because they're part of the prophetic program, prophecy. Also, they're not effect today, the past 2,000 years, because the dispensation of grace is in effect. It hasn't ended yet. As long as the dispensation of grace is in effect, Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon, God can't be operating. See, Hebrews to Revelation, you're back under performance-based acceptance system. It's either grace or works. Hebrews to Revelation, you're back under performance-based works, the law. Paul says in Romans 6, 14, you're not under law, under, but under grace. You can't op God's not operating two principles. Again, that's rightly dividing. Uh, Galatianism is the problem of mixing law and grace. Don't do that. You've got to rightly divide. So these are great questions. This is this you're at a pivotal point in your understanding about how to rightly divide. You getting it? Because God has prophets, prophecy, speaking forth, foretelling. He can write something like Genesis 3, and it doesn't take effect until the kingdom. To Christ's second coming to destroy the Antichrist and set up his kingdom. 
Therefore, he can still do the same thing. God can write something that's going to be in effect after the dispensation of grace, some doctrine, Hebrews to Revelation, and yet not have it affect, not have it be in, in effect the operating principle today. Because Paul's epistles were given by God. You know, Paul wrote 13 books more than any other man in Scripture. God is magnifying his office. Got to remember that. Got to Got to see that. Moses wrote five. John wrote five. Paul wrote more than twice as many as uh, he, he wrote more than both of them combined. God has given us some doctrine to explain all of this called Paul's epistles. Pauline dispensation makes more sense to me than any other way to interpret the Bible. Because that's the only way you can interpret the Bible. 2 Timothy 2, 7. Consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. God can have and has had prophets write things. Remember Peter says in 1 Peter, the sufferings of Christ and then the glory. Those prophets like Isaiah and all of them wrote about all that stuff back there. That stuff still hasn't come to effect. So it's the same way. There's no difference between like Isaiah and the book of Hebrews or Isaiah and the book of Revelation. By the way, the book of Revelation, it says, behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22. Revelation 22, 12, the Lord says, Behold, I come quickly. Verse 20, he says, I come quickly. Revelation 1, 1, he says, The things that must shortly come to pass. That was written 2,000 years ago, nearly. Still, that's the future. Literally, the Spirit of God took John, traveled him into time. He saw the future. He wrote it down. It hasn't come to pass in our experience yet, but as far as God's concerned, it happened. That's why God's God. He sees it all, past, present, and future, all together. It's all, it's all happened. We are just the state. It's playing out in our life, and our experience. So you wrote, so bearing in mind what they thought, how can Hebrews through Revelation be written 20, uh, excuse me, 2,000 years ago, yet somehow not come to effect after the rapture? Because the doctrine that's in effect until the rapture is Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. It just doesn't make sense that Peter, James, and John would write their epistles 2,000 years ago and then deliver them to the Jews of this person. Let me ask you, how long ago did Moses write? How long, how long ago did Moses write? A lot earlier, right? At least 1,500 years before. So, so Moses wrote 1,500 years before Jesus. Moses wrote about Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy, he says, a prophet shall the Lord thy God give unto thee, like unto me. Him shall you hear. That was 1,500 years before Jesus. Let's go back further. Moses wrote about what God said back in the garden, Genesis 3, to the serpent, that the seed of the woman shall destroy your seed. It That was 4,000... 4,000, not two, 4,000 years before Jesus Christ. It's going to be 6,000 years before that, that, that passage is, is, is that, that, that actual prophecy is fulfilled when Christ comes to destroy the Antichrist and sets up his kingdom. So God wrote something 6,000 years before it's going to be fulfilled. And, and, and you're like, how can they write something 2,000 years? It's called prophecy. What God can do. He calls those things which be not as though they were. So they wrote Hebrews through Revelation. Peter, James, John, Jude. Brother of Jesus. Another brother of Jesus like James. Jude. The writer of Hebrews. We don't know who wrote Hebrews. God didn't say God. It starts with God. So he wrote it. Didn't want the human author to be revealed. They wrote those epistles just like Moses wrote. Just like Isaiah wrote. Just like Daniel wrote. Daniel wrote before Jesus Christ's first advent about his second coming. There was a gap. Nobody even knew how long. Nobody knows. So prophetic, prophecy, prophets, prophetic. Um, yes, they were delivered to the Jews of the dispersion, but by, so, so was Paul's epistles. Just like all of God's word is for us, even the prophetic program, Peter says, as Paul has wrote, as in all his epistles, 2 Peter 3, Paul's epistles were being distributed Interesting. They needed a working knowledge of the what what God was doing in in the dispensation of grace through Paul. I'm talking about the little flock. They understood that they're not the body of Christ. They understood that they were the little flock. Peter was telling them, you know what, the kingdom's on hold right now. It's postponed. 
and 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 Paul is the one to to find out more. Listen to him. Interesting. So you wrote, how could Peter, James, and John write their epistles two thousand years ago, then deliver them to the Jews of the dispersion of that time? Then you wrote in in parentheses, way back then. Let's see. 2,000 years is nothing to God. A day with the Lord is a 1,000 years and 1,000 years one day. You're on the, you're, you're on the cusp. You got, you're, you're at a, you're at a, anonymous, you're at a time where I'm kind of looking. I've been doing I'm looking at these things. You're going to have to humble your heart towards the word of God. Just, just your, your thinking, your attitude towards God. Give him the benefit of the doubt. If it's hard right now, Peter says that, I'm sure you have a religious background. He says, it's hard to be understood. They that are unlearned and unstable rest. Well, let me help you as brother to brother, assuming you're, you're a brother or sister. Maybe a sister. Things like, you know, way back then, went then. See, that tells me about, and I'm saying this kindly, your ignorance of God's word. You do err not knowing the scripture. Because here, 2,000 years ago, it's not way back when, then. Because 4,000 years before Jesus Christ showed up, Mo, uh, Moses wrote about him, about God prophesying about him in the garden. 1,500 years before Jesus Christ showed up, Moses wrote about him. Deuteronomy says, a pro, told, told Israel, a prophet is coming just like unto me. Hundreds of years, Isaiah and Daniel prophesied before them. So you have the way back then, don't use that terminology when it comes to God. So you say, Peter, James, and John would write their epistles some 2,000 years ago, then deliver them to the Jews of the dispersion of that time way back then, but yet not be addressing any Jew at all until some 2,000 years ago in the future. Why? Because who is speaking to the Jews? Let me see. Let me see what my time is. 17 minutes. Okay. Why? Because who is speaking to the Jews today? Who is the spokesman to God to individual Jews and Gentiles today? Acts 9, 15. The Lord Jesus Christ says about Saul, he is my chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Paul says, Galatians 2, we should go to the heathen and they to the circumcision, Peter, James, and John. Circumcision, that was the little flock of their day. Okay, you got to get that. The reason you go, but... How can they be addressing the Jews of the dispersion back then, but yet not be addressing any Jew at all until two, some 2,000 years and later in the future? Because the people, the, 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 the man who God has ordained to address Jews of this dispensation, you know, there was some transition early. Peter, James, John, there's a lot of transition. Acts is a book of transition. The early epistles of Paul, transition. But now the little flock is gone. It's died off. And every Jewish person on earth, since that Jewish little flock died off, that, that, that's, that their, their spokesman from God is Paul, just like us Gentiles. God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Great question. But yet, how can they speak to the dispersion and yet not be addressing any Jew at all some 2,000 years later in the future? Because Paul. That's why Paul's in your Bible. You, you're about to learn how to rightly divide. You, this, this is the, today is the key. This, this study is the key. Peter, James, and John don't need to speak to Jews today because Paul is given by Christ to speak to Jews. And Paul says that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, though we have, he says, he says, we know no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. 2 Corinthians 5. Then you continue, ended. You say, we might be able to look back and make that presumption today, but I don't think that they would have bought it back in their day. What do you mean? Bought what? You don't think they would have bought it? Like, like, like they wouldn't believe what Peter, James, John, and Paul said? The apostles of God? Y 
None of them knew that the dispensation of grace would go this long. But when Paul saw a lost Jew, and that's the difference, a lost Jew, as he's going on his apostolic journeys, he ran into members of the little flock, or members of the little flock in Corinth, some in Rome, you know, they Jewish believers who had already believed on Christ their Messiah before Paul and, and, and was scattered. Okay. They needed to know about the advance in the program. But when Paul saw a lost Jew, he would go into those synagogues and these lost Jews are part of the heathen. He didn't say, hey, go listen to Peter. He didn't send him to Peter. He gave him the gospel. They became members of the body of Christ. They we and, and to buy that, to, to buy that, for example, look at Apollos. In Acts 18, 19, you see Apollos. Apollos was a Jew, mighty in the scriptures. He, all he knew was the baptism of John. He didn't know anything further than that. Two other Jews, Priscilla and Aquila, husband and wife, who got saved under Paul's ministry, showed them the word of God more perfectly. Apollos, he bought it. He bought it. You're using your terms. He bought it. He says, yep, there's the, there, that's why the kingdom is not here. That makes sense. I got it. And boom. Apollos got saved into the church, the body of Christ. He became a member of the body of Christ. He was a Jew. He bought it. I don't think they would have bought it. For it. So I just want you to, you know, and I know it's tough through, you know, just seeing words written and, uh, you know, I apologize for my zeal. I mean, no, I don't apologize for my zeal. Paul says be zealous. I just want to exhort you. I don't know who you are, brother, sister, lost. I'm, I'm, shoot, I'm assuming you're brother, sister, because these, these things, you're trying to get it, you know. I can just tell by the way this is written. You're kind of like, ah, I don't buy that. Ah, it's hard to swallow. Yeah, it's called doubt, gainsaying. There's a difference between trying to understand, gain understanding. Here's, here's my best advice to you. Go to God sincerely. Say, Lord, I don't understand things. I need help understanding things. Go with a humble heart. Use, I'm Brother Ron Knight. Personally contact me. I'll help you through these questions, these are fantastic questions. People, this is what people like. That's why we, we record it, we put it on the blog, we, we transcribe it. People like, some people like video, some people like audio, some people like to read. We got it all. We read the written, we got it all. I will personally help you if you'd like in all your questions. I love questions, the people love questions, and need some good questions. But I would say this, you're at that, you're at that point. Less doubt. Doesn't mean you're not going to be confused. Doesn't mean like you're going to understand. You, 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 you're trying to get light from God. That's why your prayer life for God. But it has to be sincere. And consider, I'll help you. Because I could probably see some things right now that you're kind of still figuring out. It's just putting puzzle pieces together. That's how you rightly divide God's word. You put puzzle pieces together. And I can help you. We put these puzzle pieces together a lot. I've been, I'm used to dealing with these puzzle pieces. But you want, you know. I don't think they buy that way back when, then, you know, oh, I don't know. It's hard to swallow. No, that type of stuff. We're going to let that go by the wayside and we're going to say, give up that way. God benefit up. When you study the Bible, you're going to always, particularly if you're new to dispensationalism or, or to reading your Old Testament, you, you just keep constant. I read things and I say, oh boy, I, I forgot that was there. And some things I don't grasp right off. I say, Lord, okay, it says what it says. I don't really grasp it. You're gonna give me understanding. And you just you're just getting to exercise that. You just say, oh, Lord, it's like a, he's he's our father. He wants us to know. It takes time. You got a father, you say, Dad, I want to know. He says, I'll tell you in time. Okay, Dad. There it is. You know, you know, no no gain saying doubt and stuff like that. Doesn't mean you 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 won't be confused at times or have un lack of understanding. But that's why God has other members of the body of Christ. And I, I personally, Brother Ron Knight, will, will be your helper if you'd like. You send the question, answer it. And we're putting these on because these are fantastic questions. But I just want to let you know, uh, have that sincere heart of uh, faith in, in the scriptures, okay? All right, well, thank you for uh, Anonymous. Thank you for your uh, making contact and your question. Hopefully you get this. And hopefully you, you 
you, you touch base with us again at least to, you know let me know i'm not saying you have to agree with the things i said i'm just kind of help trying to help you i've seen these types of questions before you write on the precipice but you have to understand that not only is pauline dispensational uh how did you put it uh pauline dispensationalism makes more sense to me than any other way of interpreting the bible because that's the only way so just throw those other ones out and, and stick with that with Paul. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, we, we look forward to hearing from you again, and hopefully these things help. All right. Uh, God's grace and peace be with you, Brother Ron.